You know, one of the best things about going to the laboratory is that I have a lot of fun. Forget what the kids think. I enjoy working in the lab. And I think the fact that I like working in the lab really comes through to my students. If I enjoy what I'm doing, they enjoy what I'm doing so much more. Well, I have a favorite demonstration. It's going to be the ammonia fountain. It sure takes me a lot of time to set it up. I really have to think about it. I use it for one period. After that, it's over. The kids love to see it, but I think I can make it work for me a little bit better. If I like working in the labs, I can imagine that my kids are going to like working in the labs, too. They want to be involved in any reaction that's occurring. So I'm going to have volunteers from my classroom come up to participate in the demonstration. Now, if you're going to have your students be part of a demonstration that you're doing, you want to make sure that they're following the correct safety procedures. They should have their goggles on. They should be informed of anything that they need to know about previously. But for this demonstration, it's pretty simple. I want to show you part of the setup. What I have here, I would do this in my classroom with beakers. And what I have here are five different solutions. To each of these solutions, I have added, uh, to each of the cups of water, I have added an indicator. I'm not going to tell you which indicator I've got right now. But I want to do an adjustment. So I'm going to show you how these were created. I left one just for that purpose. I'm going to add universal indicator. You know what they say, if a little's good, a lot more is better. And I want my colors to be vibrant. So I'm just going to pour in a little universal. Give a quick stir. Maybe. I always say more is better. Pour in a little universal. Give a quick stir. Now, the color tells me something about the pH of my solution. And what I want to do is I want to modify this so that it's ever so slightly acidic. To do this, I'm going to take a pipette. This is 0.1 molar hydrochloric acid. We know what color should appear when we add acid to a universal indicator solution. You know, that took one drop to go to orange. Two drops, still sort of orange. I'm going to put one more drop in here. That's not bad. OK. So that's going to be my solution that is slightly acidified. Previously, I slightly acidified all of these. Now, for the reaction itself, the ammonia fountain, I'm going to need to flush my device with ammonia gas. Here I have a, uh, just a hot plate going. I've got water. It's just started to boil. I really don't need it quite that hot, but it's going to work great. And I've got a bottle here of concentrated ammonia, ammonium hydroxide. One of the things I like about this is that I do this in my classroom. I don't have to do it under the hood. And I'm not going to be using a lot of ammonia. I shouldn't be smelling the ammonia vapors. Just for safety, I'm going to put on one glove. And I'm going to ask my first victim, I mean volunteer, <laughs> to come on up, Dave. <laughs> uh, Dave, I have a son who is David. I don't like him either. <laughs> All right. Teasing, teasing. I'm going to put just a little ammonium hydroxide into this pipette. Close this up as quickly as I can. Left it open just a little too long. And then I'm going to take a paper towel, which is right here. And I want to just wipe off the tip of the pipette. I don't want any ammonium hydroxide dripping there. OK.
Now, I'm going to collect the ammonia gas in a Burrell pipette that has been cut. I'm going to place this here so that you can see it from the overhead camera. I have a couple of different pipettes showing and it's hard to pick the one that you want to use. The one you want is going to be what I call a super jumbo pipette or a jumbo pipette. Um, they do go by different names. What I'm looking for is something that holds about five to seven milliliters and I want it to have a nice junction where it tapers nicely outside the bulb and goes down to a thinner stem. I don't like the one here. This one is not the one I want. If you're buying from Flynn, this is the package you want. It's the extra large bulbs. And what I'm going to do is take and cut off the pipette just below the thick part of the, of the bulb, at the top of the stem. There's a good example that you see there. Now all I'm going to do is this. I'm going to take the pipette with the ammonia hydroxide I'm going to put it into the hot water. Now if I put it there, you know it's going to start vaporizing even faster. So to collect the ammonia gas, I'm going to insert the tip of the thin stem pipette containing the ammonia hydroxide into the larger jumbo pipette. Okay, now this isn't going to take long. I'm going to make sure that this is flushed with the ammonia gas, Dave. Then I'm going to hand it to you you're going to pick one of these acidified solutions. I'm going to remove the stirring rods from these two. I'm going to talk about them later. And then you're going to put the pipette just below the surface of the liquid, squeeze gently and release quickly, and we'll see what happens. We want to watch Dave, okay? So here we go. This is going to go down into the water, and I'm going to collect the ammonia gas. I'm going to turn this down just a little bit. I thought I had turned it off. There we go. Okay, you ready? ready. It's coming to you. We'll see what happens. Pick your poison over there. Have a good time. Squeeze. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> okay. Just to the right. Okay, well now we see something's happened. We have a, a definite color change here. Is that positioned well? Okay, we've got a great color change here. You can see a difference. We're going to talk about what indicator we've been using. Liz, we're going to have you come up next, okay? Same thing here, ammonia, the tip of the pipette goes into the super jumbo bulb. I take the pipette with the ammonia out of the hot water while I'm waiting. I really don't smell a lot of ammonia gas here and you know that the ammonia is easily detected. Okay, I think I'm just about filled. You ready, Liz? Mm -hmm. Okay, coming to you. All right. Good. Miss Emily. When my students can get involved in the activity, you know, they're paying more attention. They like to watch their classmates, too. So I feel like I'm getting more student involvement and, and students are thinking about what's going on here. Ready? Mm -hmm. You're going to take it and put it beneath the surface of the liquid, mm -hmm. and then squeeze. Okay. Can you hear that? <laughs> you know, I think what I like about this demonstration, Dave, come on back, is that so often all we use in chemistry is our visual senses. But here you can feel the chemistry. What do you think? Mm -hmm. You can feel the chemistry, and hopefully you can hear the chemistry. All right, pick one that hasn't been used. I'm 
I'm completing my fourth ammonia fountain right now. Last one. Liz, come on back. I'm just waiting for a slight whiff of the ammonia, and I've turned my hot plate down quite a bit. Okay, but there we go. Last one. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. All right, now, what would I want to discuss with my students? A couple of things. And why would I want to do a demonstration like this? I don't have time to set up the ammonia fountain for every class. And if you have any sort of leaks, you may have problems with it. This works simply, easily, and you know what? I use almost no ammonium hydroxide. If you consider how much ammonia started off in this pipette, and now how much remains, the amount of chemical that I've used is almost nil. And that says something. You know, when you're changing from the liquid phase to the gas phase, think about the increase in volume that occurs. So I don't need a lot of liquid. I can pretty much do this without a hood if I'm careful. If you have a hood, you can always use it. But if you're forced to work in a situation here in an open room, smelling the ammonia gas is not going to be a problem if you don't overdo it. When you're not collecting the gas in the jumbo pipette, just simply remove the ammonia from the, from the heated water. The thin stem is going to keep the gas in. Very little ammonia is going to escape into the air. Now, after I've done this part, this is the exciting part, where you get to really see and feel and hopefully hear the chemistry. Let's talk about what we have here. There are different indicators. I'm going to take off my gloves. And I made some little signs here. So let's see what we've got. Some of them are pretty obvious. Um, let's start with the one in the middle. Okay, The one in the middle, phenolphthalein. So what should my students learn? Well, they would understand that phenolphthalein initially in the acidified solution was colorless. Now, the ammonia is a mild, moderate base. And so once we have added the ammonia here, what happens? Well, we've filled the jumbo pipette with ammonia gas. And the ammonia is extremely soluble in water about 50 milliliters of ammonia would dissolve in a liter of water. And because of its high solubility, when you take the pipette, put it beneath the surface of the liquid, and you squeeze out just a small drop and then release, a little bit of water gets pulled into the bulb. What happens then is that as the ammonia gases dissolve in that water, the pressure inside the bulb decreases. What happens then is that the bulb collapses as far as the pressure and it sucks in the liquid that's in the cup. Because it's very basic here, you're going to see a pH change. And by observing what we have here, we can see that phenolphthalein is going to be clear in an acid. But look at the pipette. The pipette shows us that we have a hot pink, a fuchsia color in a basic solution, a pH uh, greater than 7. The pH change for phenolphthalein is much higher. It's probably closer to about a pH of 9. We have some other indicators here that we could talk about. Let's look at this one. This is going to be an indicator, methyl red. Now, methyl red was orange to red, depending on how much you acidify the solution initially. But once we made the solution basic, a yellow coloration, as you can see in the small pipette. The solution here, one of my favorites, I use it a lot in the class, bromthymol blue. Bromthymol blue is going to be yellow in an acid, green at its neutral pH, at a neutral pH, and then it's going to turn blue, nice bright blue that you see there in the pipette. On this far side, 
we have a universal indicator, which shows lots of color changes. And so here, initially the uh, solution was going to be acidified and sort of an orange to red color was what we had. We've had a little bit of the ammonia leak out in here, but you can see in the pipette that we have the very dark purple. Very basic solution now because of the, of the ammonia there. I put this one up for a reason. I debated showing it at all, but this is litmus. And litmus is sort of hard to decide what the pH is. When does it go from red in the acid to blue in the base? I acidified it. I thought the solution was really not red, more of a purple coloration. And yet, I still get a nice change. I think you can see the difference and how much bluer the uh, more basic solution in the pipette is than what we started off with. It's not a great distinct change between the red and the blue as you see in the phenolphthalein when it goes from a clear to the hot pink solution. So I can teach a lot of good chemistry here. I can talk about expansion of a liquid into the gas phase. I can talk about how easily the ammonia vaporizes and we can discuss why that's true, talking about the intermolecular forces of attraction, holding those um, molecules of ammonia together. It might be related to boiling points. Uh, when we're looking at having the ammonia go from the liquid to the gas phase, how hot is that temperature going to have to be for the, that to occur for ammonia, and how would that compare to other liquids? And then we have the beautiful pH changes using the different indicators, looking at both acidic and basic solutions and how the pH changes with these indicators present. Lots of color. I have a great time doing it, getting my students involved. All you need to do uh, to remember when you do this is to follow the good safety procedures. Things that you want, would be doing yourself, you want your students to do also. You probably want to be even more careful. Enjoy!